Typhoon Hang, uh, Vong Phong is projected to approach the main uh, islands in the Japan chain just after midnight on the 12th of October. The last uh, forecasts I've seen were uh, issued at about midnight last night show uh, maximum storm surge on the order of a couple feet. In addition, of course, you can get significant wind damage associated with the high wind speeds that would be associated with a, a, a high category uh, storm. The projections are that the typhoon will um, weaken significantly as it approaches the main Japanese islands. This doesn't of course mean that there's not going to be uh, major damage. A lot of the um, developed areas in Japan uh, over the years they've constructed a series of seawalls so that modest storm surge like is expected in this particular case and shouldn't really be able to cause um, widespread damage. As a basis for comparison uh, in Hurricane Sandy which occurred in the fall of 2012 then the uh, maximum storm surge was about nine and a quarter uh, feet. The magnitude of the surge is probably not something that's so significant in this particular case. I think probably the bigger issue is that um, when you think about the potential for damage, there's directly associated with the wind, um, there could be inland flooding due to the rainfall itself, and then there could be storm surge. With regards to Irene, it was very slow moving, there was a lot of rain that was dropped, and there was a lot of inland flooding that was associated with it. In the context of Sandy, uh, most of the damage then was caused by a storm surge and so the flooding was mostly confined to the coastal communities. The thing that I most often come in contact with is, is um, a metric that basically says that the mean sea level changes by a certain amount on an annual basis. And the numbers that I've seen, they've definitely increased over the last two or three decades. And if the statistics change because storms become more severe or other things take place like sea level rise for example then going into the future using historical data to represent what we should protect against then may be insufficient then to provide a certain level of protection. At the current rate of increase then um, the effect on storm surge is relatively inconsequential because um, you know, the storm surge itself is a lot relative to the mean sea level rise. But if you look ahead another 50 years and some of the projections with regards to potential sea level rise, then will make that storm surge added on top of that higher sea level then fairly important. I think for the first time after Sandy, there was really more of a discussion in the U.S. about what should be done. There's discussion of taking kind of what I would call hard engineering solutions, and so those might involve building higher seawalls to prevent the uh, flooding from occurring, but also discussion about modifying shorelines in some areas where there's not a lot of human development already to make it more represent a natural state there, so more the coastal marshland area. And that's one of the problems that we've experienced, for example, in the Louisiana area and so on, where uh, development has really destroyed a lot of the natural marshland that would have protected against storm surge and so on and made events like Katrina and so on a lot worse than they would have been under pre-existing uh, uh, natural conditions. 13 feet. One could always build this wall higher, but there's usually some economic constraints. So the idea is then that what we would do would be to accept uh, some level of damage.